are many types of renewable energy. There's wind, solar and wave. But that's not all, as I found out when I went to Turkey. Here we have another source of renewable energy, falling water. Inspired by this revelation, I moved on again to find out more. Here I am in ancient Egypt to do some science. Ancient Egypt, land of the pharaohs, home of the pyramids, a magical realm of ferocious creatures, mysterious nomads, and rather nice luxury river cruises which I can highly recommend. And I'm here today on the River Nile to investigate the Aswan Dam, a massive hydroelectric power station. There are actually two Aswan Dams that generate electricity. The lower smaller one was constructed by the British in 1902 and the larger High Dam was completed in 1970. I know what you're thinking from my Paradise Luxury Liner yacht type cruise thing. How does hydroelectric power work? Well it's actually quite simple. All you need is some falling water and a turbine connected to a generator. Unfortunately, filming was forbidden at the dam. However, they didn't know who they were dealing with. Here I am at the Hochstau Dam filming in secret. We are not allowed to film here. I am risking my life in an Egyptian prison. This is a massive hydroelectric power station. The main source of Egypt's energy. The power it provides is absolutely amazing. The water runs through powerful turbines with gravitational potential energy being turned into the electrical energy. The water falls from a height of about 100 meters. The gravitational potential energy is converted into kinetic as it falls and then into electrical by the rotating magnets in the coils of wire which are inside the generators. So, what are the advantages of hydroelectric power? Hydroelectric power is a renewable energy resource. There is no carbon emissions as well. Maybe some, that's not strictly true. It does need power and there are a few, but it is very, very clean energy. The dam provides 85% of Egypt's electricity. Not only that, but it also protects the population from floods and droughts, as the water supply can be controlled and released only when it's needed for irrigation. I'm gonna go now before I get caught. Well, that sounds great, but are there any disadvantages to such huge hydroelectric power schemes? I travelled further along the dam to find out. Here I am a further 200 kilometres down the dam at uh, Abu Simbel Fire Tank. Um, this dam is huge, and it needs to be because it does provide 85% of Egypt's power. Yes, huge indeed. The reservoir, or Lake Nasser as it is known, is 550 kilometers long and stretches from Aswan in Egypt all the way to Sudan. It holds 132 cubic kilometers of water. When they built the dam, President Hassan actually had to have the temple moved to otherwise it'd be underwater now. Imagine what a big job that was. Both temples had to be taken apart piece by piece and reassembled higher up the hillside. This is one of the problems of hydroelectric power. Huge swathes of land have to be submerged underwater. Not only is this a threat to priceless archaeological sites, but it also means a loss of habitat for wildlife and often requires the resettlement of thousands of people. Here in Egypt, 90,000 Egyptian peasants and Sudanese nomads had to be relocated. 90,000! Another disadvantage is hydroelectric power isn't reliable. What if there's a drought and water supplies are too low to use for power generation? Some hydroelectric power stations make use of a pump storage scheme. Here, water is pumped from a lower elevation up to a higher elevation. Low cost off-peak electricity is used to run the pumps. Water then can be re-released into the turbines at high peak times to meet extra demand. That's all from ancient, well, modern Egypt, you know, the present day, back to me in the studio. And so, as I continued my trip down the River Nile on my luxury cruiser, I was left to contemplate the benefits of hydroelectric power. Yes, it is green, and yes, it causes very little CO2. Yes, it is renewable, but it is also expensive to set up, it's unreliable, and has a massive impact on the lives of others, both human and animal. Serious, solemn, food for thought indeed. My search for the perfect energy resource continues.